Hello. If you're a subscriber of mine, if you're a regular, you'll know what winter composting is all about. You'll know what chopped seaweed and leaves is all about. Um, you'll know that that's what we like to do here at Ungrown Veg. Uh, but if you're not, I'll quickly bring you up to speed um, and then we'll kick on with this video. Okay, so we're just getting through the winter months now. We're starting to get towards the spring of the year. But last year, in autumn, uh, Molly and me went to our local woods. Yes, we did, didn't we, Molly? We went to our local woods and we gathered some leaves. And we went out to our local seashore and gathered some seaweed. brought it home, we put the seaweed down uh, to weather, so we just emptied the bags out. Um, and let the rain take the stay, don't worry about salt on seaweed, there isn't that much and what there is, if you're doing winter composting, the rain will wash it off. Give it two or three weeks standing out, got quite a few showers over it, gathered it all up uh, and chopped it and dropped it.
but we chopped it and we dropped it. And we dropped it on a raised bed, an empty raised bed, so that I could collect it up uh, at the end of um, the winter months, beginning of spring, and use it in pots and bags to grow vegetables. So it up to speed. So, so what we're going to do today, uh, we're going out now, we're going to take all the chopped seaweed and leaves off the raised bed and we're going to put it in a bag and we're going to use it later. Now, from recollection, I think I chopped and dropped something like um, three bags of leaves and three bags of seaweed. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how many bags we actually get off because as you know, compost breaks down, the worms have been eating this stuff and enriching the raised bed. Um, so I'm not expecting to get that many bags back off it, uh, but that's the nature of composting. Right, so we'll do that. Oh, now then, if you're not finding this video that interesting, um, I'm going to clip on uh, at the back end of it, which I'm sure you will find interesting, the photograph that I took um, a few days ago. Uh, we went to visit a place called Burton Hall. Uh, it's in the English Lake District, uh, it's on the edge of uh, the Western Fells and it's between, roughly between, the Wasdale Valley and the Eskdale Valley. Uh, and I knew that if I took my camera there should be some interesting photographs to be taken, if not of the buildings uh, of the surrounding countryside. Uh, Erton Hall looks quite imposing, countryside's beautiful, although it is um, late winter, early spring. Um, I thought, yeah, take the camera, see if we can get some shots. Now, the first thing I noticed as soon as we got into the grounds of Erton Hall, this is my middle raised bed, and this is the seaweed and leaves, chop and drop, that sat on top of this raised bed for five cold winter months. Let me show you it. So it's quite windy. So the best of drying out. This particular bed I'm looking to sow potatoes in. So I want to take this chop and drop off. Uh, but before I do that, I would just like to say how easy this method of composting is. You saw earlier in the video, we went to the beach, got some seaweed. Uh, went to the local woods, got some leaves. Chopped it, dropped it, and I've done nothing else with it other than let the winter weather, the worms and the rain take the strain. I don't think I've even turned it over. I might have raked it, uh, but I haven't turned it over. Um, these boards going around the edges, that was just to stop it spilling over the sides of the raised bed. And this bed was filled to the, the level of those boards, so it was about three inches deep when I chopped and dropped it. Let me just show you what it used to look like. These are what the leaves used to look like, like that. There's none of those in that raised bed now, they've all disappeared. Take a look at some seaweed. That's what the seaweed looked like five months ago. That has now become that, and I've done nothing with it. I've let the worms and the rain take the strain and it's now compost. The reason I'm taking it off is because I want to use this compost now uh, in pots and bags as part of my overall compost mix. And what I believe is the goodness that has come, gone out of this uh, chop and drop through the action of the worms and the weather and the rain has actually gone down into that raised bed. So there's quite a bit of goodness left this compost now and it's in the raised bed and we'll leave that behind for the potatoes but what goodness is left in the chop and drop uh, that'll go in the pots so the little stone just be careful if you're going to chop this stuff up quite often it comes with a stone attached okay so let's rake this up and see how much we've got So if I rake till about the bottom of the board, then I'm not taking any soil off this bed, I'm just taking 
chop two weed and leaves. If you're looking at this now because you're planning on making some compost, you'll probably watch other videos on compost making. And there's all manner of ways you can do it but this is by far the simplest and by far the least amount of effort goes into it chop it drop it forget about it over winter come out in spring and use it doesn't get any easier does it now i'm not expecting to get off what i put on because some of it will now be in the raised bed, the worms will have made sure of that. And if you watch the video with the chap who says he can make this stuff in five minutes and all you've got to do is pour some coke on it and some beer, well, my advice to you is if you've got some coke, give it to the kids. And if you've got some beer, have it yourself. And don't be daft. This is how to make compost. Winter compost in a home grown veg doesn't get any easier. Come on, look at this stuff. I think this is about going to be it. Two bags. Six went on, two bags came off. So that's four bags of goodness gone into this raised bed. Does that make sense? Probably not. I think you get me drift, don't you? There's absolutely no smell with this stuff. And there's no smell because you do it over the winter months. You collect seaweed in the summer months, <laughs> you'll have smell okay. And I'll tell you what else you'll have. You'll have flies. So do it in the winter months, not the summer months. And just sit in on the raised bed. And then go and soak that beer that you're going to pour on it. <laughs> How's that? Two bags. Six on, two off. And I'll tell you, there's no smell. Smell that. Smell that. You can't, can you? That's because it is no smell. Right. Take these off. You don't need to see this, I'm going to take these boards off, rake this level and uh, then we'll sow the potatoes maybe in a, a couple of weeks time. This bed's ready to go now, we just need the weather to warm up. Uh, okay, this is normally where I would sign off but there's a little bit more to this video. Um, a little bit about royalty, some interest. Stay with it, you've got this far, you haven't long to go. Now the first thing I noticed as soon as we got into the grounds of Earton Hall was a giant oak tree. Now it was big, now it's not the tallest tree in the world, but it had a tremendous girth and it just looked old. And I thought I'm going to need to photograph that tree before I saw anything else, before I took any other photographs. I spotted this huge tree and I thought I've got to photograph this tree. Now the photo I'm going to put up, um, the tree has no leaves on it, uh, but it's alive and it's well, it's the time of year. Um, now just a little bit of history, I'll, I'll pop anywhere, 
Take a look at this. Have a look at this. This is the tree. You've got to be impressed with that. Um, now just a little bit of history. The Erton family uh, lived in the hall for at least 500 years. Uh, and they had many interesting visitors down the centuries. Uh, I've got some text. Um, I'm going to add it on at the end of the video. I'll pop, another, I'll pop the tree up again and then read the text. You really will be interested. I was interested. It, it, it's good stuff. <laughs>